We're back to the Total Education Celebrity Show on the Total Education Network, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. And I'm really excited to welcome back to the program from the Real Housewives of Miami, Leah Black. And uh, Leah, thanks for calling. And uh, I know that you had a really, really good event that helped raise money. I hope so. We're still organizing it. We have the aftermath now. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering the auction items, collecting the rest of the money, um, you know, organizing the files. It's a big thing. It takes a, about two or three weeks of uh, aftermath to clean up. But, yeah, it went great. We had fun. Everybody had a good time. And, you know, hopefully we made a lot of money. We'll see. All right. So tell us about the event, and then I want to go into some of your upcoming projects after that. But everyone likes to hear about, you know, you did the whole red carpet and all the different things. How did everything go? And I guess the process of planning it, because I remember we were talking, you were still in the final stages of planning. And all that. Yeah, you know, it takes, uh, really, it, it takes months to plan it normally, but this year, because we weren't able to secure the talent until about seven or eight weeks out, we really rushed it, and we just got lucky. We, we were able to just make it happen by really killing ourselves, <laughs> so we spent months looking and digging for talent, but, you know, it wasn't... Um, we weren't able to secure it, and so once you, you until you secure the talent, you can't put the invitations, you can't have to save the date, you can't organize the donors or the auction items because everybody wants to know when and where. So that kind of put us a little bit um, behind the the gun, but you know we were able to pull it off. It's basically Jason and I, and then one time out of the year we hire maybe someone for like maybe eight or ten dollars an hour to help us sort through all the f- millions of phone calls that come in and the emails and the files and keeping the auction items straight. But it's really just the two of us year-round, so it's it's a major undertaking. So all that planning and then finally the event comes. I remember seeing you tweet out. You were, like, really pleased it was happening because said, finally we're here. Finally, finally we're, here. we're here, and it was great. And we had, by the way, I mean, huge amounts of um, – you know, press. I mean, the press was national and international and print and television and magazine. So we got a huge amount of press and, um, you know, everything, um, really went flawless. I mean, uh, Flo Rida was amazing. He performed for a full, I mean, like probably close, maybe an hour and he jumped off the stage and ran around in the audience and put people on his shoulders. And I mean, he really put on the show. And before that, we had um, Taylor Hicks, who, you know, he was one of the first winners of American Idol, and he's just signed on in Par- and at the Hotel Paris in uh, Las Vegas for a permanent gig there. And he was amazing for the dinner music, and he played the harmonica, and he sang, and, you know, he did a little country, did a little blues, he did a little bit of everything. And then we had this guy called Whiskas, who's, I mean, he he's a DJ and a like guy, but he's more than that. I mean, he performs in huge, massive stadiums with, you know, 10 feet kind of, um, I mean, big plastic people that are with all lights flashing all throughout them, dancing around the room and lights and sound and DJ music. And that went on until, I guess, after one. So, you know, we had a packed uh, house and, uh Probably 20 live auction items, uh, over 100, 100 and something uh, silent auction items. And, you know, it was a great night, and we're glad that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> and let me, let me make that very clear. We're very glad we're finished. <laughs> Survived another one. And then we'll have to talk about the aftermath, which you talked about, then having to look at all the different money you raised what how the total of the expenses of putting on the event and all that stuff but uh who were the who's who that came to the event that that came to visit the scene oh my the... goodness let me think um Oh, God, Jason, who came on my mind is <laughs> blank Dennis Rodman came and uh Sammy Sosa, Bernard Hopkins, they both are big athletes, and all the house, most of the housewives. Um, and then what, uh, the, um, Burn Notice, um, Gabrielle Anwar, and, um, oh my God, I mean, we've lost, lost my thought. I mean, I can't even recall who came. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, Jonathan Shaban, it's on the Kardashians, and, Lance Bass, you know, from NC. Yes, yes. Um, oh, my God. I don't even recall. But, you know, we, we had a, a fun group. Um, you know, 
politicians, judges, corporate people, Fortune 500 people, everybody. <laughs> well, it sounds like it was like unbelievable. And, and uh, I'm sure when you had to go meet and greet and, and talk to all of them, that took a long time. And you said, where it happened to my day, right? You wanted to make sure you Well, you know, to- you have the red carpet, which I, I did for probably an hour and a half. And then I started walking through the cocktail hour where we had Grey Goose supplied liquor and liquor and more liquor and uh the hors d'oeuvres from the from the hotel from the fountain blue were amazing so after walking through that area for a long period of time and greeting everybody then everyone went into the ballroom and i tried to make the rounds around the table but between the fires that there are to put out and the people that you you know want their picture taken or want to take talk with you the night goes by pretty fast and so you know it was pretty crazy but um you know dennis of course was a big hit because you know wherever he goes craziness goes and press falls <laughs> so basically it was a fun night well i'm sure dennis is crazy have you ever met dennis before at this event or you- oh yeah we're friends we go back a long way yeah well, I was a huge Dennis Rodman fan, especially when he played for the Pistons then, and things got a... And did you meet him when he started playing for Miami? Is that when you met him, or you knew him before that? No, I met... Uh, Dennis didn't play... Uh, New Dennis York. Play I mean, right? L.A., L.A., I don't know. My LA, yeah. Had, when he played no, for No, I, um, I knew him way back. I don't even remember how and when. And then, you know, when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he invited us to go, but then we didn't to go. But we, we've been friends for quite a long time. I, I just find I kind of a person that um, kind of collects people, and I find him kind of fascinating and interesting. You know, you, whether you agree with him or you don't agree with him or you think he's crazy or not, you have to admit he's a fascinating character to watch. <laughs> you know, so I find him interesting to watch. I'd love to have an interview with him. What a fun guy he would be to interview. Cause especially, I watched him on The Celebrity Apprentice, uh, the last one, and he was definitely did better than the first time, for sure. <laughs> It was oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy. Yeah, so that's kind of that was that night, and then you know, the, then a lot of people come in from out of town. So then you know, you have the entertaining of the people before and after um, they um, leave town, and you know, so it was just kind of one of those crazy weekends that we're still recovering from. <laughs> The recovery will continue forever, right? <laughs> will continue. The recovery re- continues, absolutely. So when you're saying the final part is the uh, damage control or whatever after the whole process is done, <laughs> so you go ahead and then you have to count out all the money that was raised, look at the expenses. Yeah, we then. try to count the money. We try to still negotiate prices down of anything we were charged for. The sponsors pay for a lot of it, so sometimes we go back to sponsors and ask for more money and you know we still work the deal i mean we work at like every single dollar is like our life depends on because if you don't work it that way at the end of it you just don't make any money because you know the charities used to be where everybody wanted to give everything but now it's become almost a little cottage industry where you know the hotels make money and the lighting and the sound people make money and everybody gets in on a little bit of the action whereas before Back, you know, when I started this 19 years ago, you know, there weren't that many charities and everybody wanted to do their part. But there's so many charities now that they just can't afford to do their part, you know. So I should have locked them all down on 20-year contracts. (laughs) But I never had any idea I'd be doing this 19 years later, let's be honest. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, Well, it just seems like you're very experienced in this in different ways that you talked about in your background. But now let's go to one thing you were really passionate about. Here's your brand, the Leah Black brand and uh, uh, your foundation is so important to you and all these things but now let's talk about specifically the product line you were that you were we were talking about and how you were ready to launch a lot of things how are things going there well things are going well you know i I have the world of leahblack.com and um you know i've been in the beauty business for oh my gosh 20 plus years and i've had infomercials i've been on hsn i've had international distribution i've you know worked this business for a very long time and then when i got married i kind of took a little bit of a time out and then i wound up fast forward a few years later having a little boy who's now he just turned 12 and so i 
I didn't work as hard as I used to work. And then I decided after my son was in school, he's like so busy and my husband's busy. And I thought, you know, I'm doing the charity full time. I should just get back into the skincare and beauty business. So I launched, relaunched my initial skincare line that I've had 20 years, which has still been around, but I really haven't made it a national presence like I used to. And, uh, and then I just kind of stumbled onto this fabulous handbag plan that I started by making bags or having bags made for myself. And then after that, um, I decided, you know, if I'm going to jump in the business, I may as well jump in it. So I put the big website up, and we're doing promotions and um, talking to television networks and things about promoting the line. And, you know, I'll go back and probably – do it like I did before in grand style if I don't wear myself out in the meantime. <laughs> and because of that well, experience, you could be very successful in your business then, right? Because you did I would think so. You know, I would hope so because I, I've done it for so many years and I know the ins and outs. I know the people. I know the skincare business. I, you know, we've got the clinical studies. We've got the scientific research. We've got the uh, claims that we can li- make and the testimonials and the befores and the afters and all the things that um, that I know how to do, I'm just going to do again, but I'm trying to do it in a leaner, meaner way and not be uh, so labor-intensive like it was before when I would travel 100 or 200,000 miles a year traveling all over the place and doing appearances and doing seminars and trade shows. I'm trying to do it a, a little more... Um, smart so I don't have to work quite as hard to get the same results but it's really more of a a movement really about women and empowering women and how to help women get where they want to be and stay where they want to be and work smarter and less you know hard and really um, be all they can be so you know the skincare and the pocketbooks and the jewelry and the things that I sell are just sort of a vehicle to to do that because once you connect with the consumer and um, you have kind of a uh, things in common, you know, they all want the same things. And if you can, through your experience, show them how to get those things and empower them to get those things, it only benefits them and it only benefits you. So why not? Exactly. So, okay. So that that's where we're going there. Any other news to report? Well, you know, we have our little non-show show that no one knows about going on. <laughs> Yes. And other than that, I would say um, I have a pretty busy schedule. My son, my husband, the show, the charity, my business, and what else do I have going on, Jason? I don't think he's listening. <laughs> Nobody ever listens to me. So, so, or, so you're filming the next year of the show then? Oh, my book, too. Okay. I have my book. Oh, my oh, God, gosh. my book. Uh, that's why we have to have you on monthly, Leah, because there's so many I things know, to talk about. I know. There's too many things. So, so I didn't know this. So, so put me through the loop. This, and there's going to be another season of Real Housewives of Miami then? Um, well, they've announced that there's another season. Congrats. And uh, they've, they've been doing some filming in Miami, and everyone's um, optimistic that this is going to be a really big show this year. So we'll see. Oh, uh, but you can't say anything because I understand. Let's talk about the book now. When is that coming out? <laughs> I wrote this book about three years ago, and I called it Leah's Little Black Book, but it's um, the social lights of Miami and kind of their little dark secrets, but they're camouflaged characters like, you know, Jackie Collins would do. And um, a woman from Vanity Fair read it, and she said, oh, my God, it's so Truman Capote-esque in his earlier writings where everybody's going to want to pretend they're one of these characters in the book no matter how bad they look. But my reluctance was that people are going to go, oh, my God, is she talking about me? So I'm having it um, professionally edited right now, and then and then I'll bring it out after the first of the year. Well, I'd love to have you back on a monthly basis. There's so much to talk about, <laughs> Leah. And I already oh my talk, God! You, you already remember after we talked about uh, you know the whole event and the whole deal, and uh, after I hear heard all of what happened, that's fantastic. And uh, and also you're still working with your charity, so you have so much going on. And I, as I see, I hear Jason in the background. He he's uh, definitely helps you through that process, doesn't he? Oh my God! Well, thank you. Jason is amazing. He he kind of does everything that I just don't want to do or can't get around to doing. So yeah, he's great. <laughs> okay, so where can we find information on you, Leah, and learn more about you again, so our listeners can find? Oh, out thank what's going. you so much. It's always fun. What is your? Where can we find websites? All the different oh, things. Oh, the world of leahblack dot com, and I'm on Leah Black Miami on Twitter, and I I do a lot of tweeting. And, um, you know, we have our offices in downtown Miami and, you know, we're kind of, we're in lots of stores and we're having fun with it. 
Well, fantastic. I know we're going to get, uh, when I come out to the Miami Book Fair International this year, we're going to have to meet and hang out for sure. Oh, for sure. My husband's never met a book fair he didn't visit. <laughs> oh, the Miami, so we'll definitely see we, we love Miami Book Fair and we love covering it every year. So, and then we'll oh. hopefully have to say, hey, we, Leah's book will be out too. So we got to get that at the Miami Book Fair. We'll try to. Get, oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I hope. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, yeah, you, never, you never know. But good talking to you and we'll be in touch next month. Take care. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right. That was Leah Black. You're listening to Education Celebrity Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.